Hello, everyone. Thank you for the invitation in the um, workshop on effective human robot uh, interaction. I'm Professor Adriana Tapus uh, from ENSTA Paris in the Autonomous System and Robotics Lab. And today I'm going to speak about socially acceptable robots with humor and personalizable behaviors uh, based on user's profile. As you may already know, I'm interested in socially assisted robotics. So in this context, it's really very well known uh, that large and growing subpopulations worldwide are suffering from a lack of trained, dedicated care. So the main idea is to build uh, intelligent um, robots uh, that can help people in, in the daily life uh, and continuously learn and adapt their behavior in order to provide a customizable interaction and help. So let's see what's the motivation of this work. So social assistive robotics, as I said it, have the potential uh, to enhance so the quality of life for broad populations of users. So the elderly individuals with physically and cognitive impairments and those in rehabilitation therapy, for example. However, such systems uh, pose a new challenge of being both population relevant and highly individualized to the special needs of each user in the particular beneficiary population. And this is due mainly to the inter and intra uh, individual differences and variability. Of course, this is valid not only for assistive applications, but in all human robot interaction. So for this specific uh, presentation, I'm going to look only at the physiological and psychological um, traits and parameters uh, that have an impact on, on social interaction. So, and with all this in mind, uh, I will try to explore sort of the relationship between sort of the user uh, profile and cognitive performance in different human robot interaction scenarios. Uh, and also I'm going to discuss sort of the personalization and adaptation of so sort of the robot's behavior. So as I previously mentioned it, in order to define so the user's profile, we look at different aspects from social sciences. Uh, and here I just mentioned, going to mention four of them. Uh, so this is so the morning, evening uh, type of an individual that has a huge impact uh, on the task performance and cognitive load. It's when you say, for example, that you're not a morning person or an evening person. So secondly, we have so the personality of a user that influences so the social interaction. And you have different manners of measuring personality, uh, such as I think personality, a questionnaire, or the big uh, five. So this tool will help us to identify, for example, so the personality traits of an individual. So I'm not going to enter too much into details. So you have some of them here on the screen. Uh, we have also the sensory profile of a user uh, that defines the way people are interacting with the environment through touch, taste, smell, movement, visual, auditory information. Uh, so this is really very helpful. Uh, and last but not least, uh, we have also the humor style of an individual. Of course, so this is not the goal of this uh, presentation of this talk, but just to show you that we are capable of modeling. So the user state, uh, so we can look at the thermal images and recognize uh, users' emotional state. We can also detect so the, the, the GSR and link it to the difficulty of a task and also uh, detect so the blinking rate and emotional state based on the gait and action uh, analysis. So just a few words of the temperature. This is really very interesting and it was not so much uh, explored in the literature. Uh, so here you can see so the thermal representation uh, for extraction of region of interest along uh, with the vascular representation of the major uh, vessel affecting so the subcutaneous uh, temperature uh, of the face. So the, the temperature is increasing 
or decreasing with respect to the vasodilatation or vasoconstruction of the blood vessels. So based on these vessels, uh, there are some region of interest on the face where there are a more vessel passing. So these were identified here on the on the right, you can see which are these um, regions. Like for example, you have, so frontal, you have periorbital uh, region, nasal tip and perinasal. Um, you have um, maxillary and cheeks, both cheeks and the cheek. Okay, so this, um, this uh, table here shows an overview of the direction of temperature variation in the considered regions of interest cross emotions. Uh, for example, you can notice that the temperature uh, is decreasing in the nasal area uh, during a stress or fear action. So of course, I'm not going to enter too much in two details. We have also the GSR that can be used to measure so the arousal of an individual, and that uh, is a good predictor for cognitive load and of emotional responses to stressful life events. So this was a study for many years now. So um, let me show you a very short video in which we're monitoring so the GSR and the temperature variation uh, in the forehead uh, and so the nose temperature um, those areas. So we are looking in particular to emotion. So fear that you're going to see in red and happiness that you get to see in, in uh, blue. Um, and so we can see uh, what you're going to see here. I'm just going to tell you exactly what you're going to see on, on, on in the video. So here, what you're going to see is a GSR that is increasing in the stressful event for fear because uh, the participant is looking like a scary movie. Here it's a comedy. Uh, and also the uh, temperature uh, in the nose is going to decrease uh, for the uh, fear um, emotion. So let me show you the video. So here it's normal, nothing it's happened, no event. And right now, so you're going to see for the fear, so the red line is going to increase, so the GSR is going to increase. And at the same time, so you're going to hear, hear uh, a decrease in the temperature in the nose area, which is um, significant for um, stress. Okay. Let me start right now. So I just show you some of the things that we are looking at, but let me show you how we are applying them in a concrete example that we developed for the elderly uh, suffering from MCI, so mild cognitive impairment. Uh, so this work was conducted as part of the EU Horizon 2020. So it was a Richmond project. Um, so the main goal um, was to help so the elderly in their daily activities so as to remain active as much as possible in their own um, home environments. So, and we use uh, the Tiago robot from Paul Robotics. So the robot was deployed in uh, three care facilities, so in Greece, Poland, and the UK. Uh, and so the robot interacted on these three sites, um, testing sites where so the robot for uh, several uh, weeks. So for this presentation, I chose one example in particular. Uh, I will show you um, so how we use this kind of system for monitoring um, to, to, to look at, uh, uh, to see if the, for example, the elderly took their medication. So we know that sometimes, so the elderly uh, refuse to take so the medication and lie uh, to the general practitioner uh, about that. Uh, so the idea is to ensure they have taken their medication or respected interdictions about food, diet, and also ensure they fulfill the requirements of the therapeutic process. However, this is, of course, you may know, this is a huge challenge and a very difficult task. So in order to detect lies, uh, we inspired ourselves a lot from the forensics uh, context and sciences, and we used different physiological parameters, uh, such as heart rate, um, skin conductance, uh, face temperature, and also various behavioral uh, manifestations 
And based on, on these multimodal systems, so uh, we try to detect lights. So we know, for example, that um, heart rate increases to higher values when we lie. Blood pressure uh, sharply uh, increases. Uh, skin conductance increases uh, to higher values when we lie. Skin temperature increases also in the periorbital region. Blinking rate, it's lower uh, rate um, when lying and significantly higher rate when uh, after lying. So based on all these a priori knowledge, uh, these are some of the results uh, that um, interesting findings that we, 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 we found in our um, experiments. So we found that female participants had a higher rate when telling the truth compared to when lying. Uh, individuals uh, with high neuroticism had a higher heart rate when telling the truth than when lying. And also uh, regarding some of the behavioral manifestation, we found that higher heart had a vertical position when lying to a robot compared to being honest or robot in higher response time when lying compared to being honest. So this is still uh, ongoing research and we have to have more results uh, in the near future. And now, so the, the second part, it's a little bit longer and um, it's a very recent work that we have published. So this year in several conferences, so HRI, Roman, ICSR. So it's about a robot telling jokes and humor. So first of all, why do we need humor and why it's so important social interaction? So. Maybe you know, and everyone says jokes and uh, try to have some humorous uh, behaviors. So humor can really help uh, people quickly reduce communication barriers and promote interpersonal relationships. So we believe that a robot capable of expressing humor uh, will be perceived as more natural. And so the performance in humor with interaction will be improved significantly. So we came up with the idea of focusing on equipping uh, robots with humor. And these uh, can also be used later in the assistive context. So there are two aspects uh, mainly that uh, we focused on. So first of all, is the understanding. So the reaction of humans to humor. And secondly, how we can generate a robot's uh, behavior that will have um, humorous uh, uh, content. So these are the two, um, the two parts. So before going further, let's look at humor and so the various humor styles. So it's very important to say that in maybe in the past 50 years, uh, humor has been really conceptualized in numerous ways and different styles were presented. Uh, so most well-known uh, model is a one of Martin. Um, and so they are like, as you see, as you can see here on the screen on the uh, figure. So there are like two positive, um, so which is affiliative and self-enhancing um, and two negative, which are aggressive humor and self-defeating one, uh, styles of humor that have been delineated in the literature. So humor styles really reflect so the different ways in which individuals use humor to uh, communicate with others and also to how they can cope with uh, daily stress. So for example, I can say that an affiliative uh, humor uh, style uh, refers to a tendency to use humor, to amuse others, uh, facilitate uh, relationships, and reduce interpersonal stress. You have on the other side, like self-enhancing humor that involves using hu uh, humor as a coping strategy or style. Um, you have also so the aggressive humor that it's used to manipulate others, such as sarcasm, ridicule, uh, and hostile teasing. 
And lastly, you have the self-defeating humor that involves amusing others by doing or saying humorous things at own, one's own um, um, degrading. Okay, so this is uh, something, these are the four. Um, in general, so these four humor styles have been found, found to be really uh, more strongly and consistently related to personality and well-being. Okay. So let me show you some of the questions that I'm going to focus on next. And I'm going to show you so three experiments that we have run uh, so this year. Uh, and as I said, so each of them, they were uh, presented at one of the conference. Um, so based on these findings, so in the social sciences and Marty's model of humor style, so these are the, the three main uh, question, research questions that we wanted to address. So we wanted to know what is the role of user profile, uh, like gender, humor style, cultural background, and personality in the perception uh, of a robot telling jokes? Um, we wanted also to see what is the role of nonverbal robot behaviors, like gesture and power robot in expressing jokes. And uh, the third point that we, we were interested in was to see um, how the humor style, so the different, the, the four humor styles that I have just shown, affect people's perception on uh, robot humor. Okay, so let me start with the first experiment. Okay, so this is um, in which we wanted to see how a robot with humor is perceived, and if there is there are any differences with respect to gender, uh, cultural background, etc. So uh, in this experiment, this first experiment, we this was really at the beginning of this year. So what we have done so quickly, we, we used so now a robot uh, and we tested uh, two conditions. Um, one in which the robot is uh, telling some jokes with generated gestures and one in which, so the second condition where the robot is telling some jokes without any gestures. Um, so the, the jokes that we used, so we're extracting from a joke data. So a uh, very simple, so we use so the animated speech, which is a simple built-in uh, function in Naoki, which can automatically generate meaningful uh, gestures according to the speech content. Uh, we had in total 21 participants uh, from our university, and we had a very nice distribution regarding, so the cultural background, uh, we had uh, 10 European and 11 Chinese participants. So the participants uh, watched 20 videos um, of the robot telling a joke. So, and each participant had to fill in uh, so three questionnaires. So two, uh, so the big five for the personality, the humor style, and one post experiment for the ratings of the robot's performance. Okay, so you can see here in the, um, uh, first table, um, so the participants' personality traits, for example, I'm just going to tell you, so we had 13 extroverted individuals and eight introverted ones. Uh, here in the, the graph on the um, left, uh, you can see, so the participants' distribution based on the humor style. So it can be noticed that European participants uh, are more affiliative and that Chinese participants are more self-enhancing. So therefore there are um, cultural differences between so the European and Chinese individuals uh, humor style. So we used uh, Kruskal Wallis to analyze our data and we found that the presence of the gesture, the cultural background and the humor style significantly affect people's rating on robot telling jokes. So, and so the gender and personality traits didn't show any significant influence on people's uh, ratings. So if you want to know more about this work, please uh, read our paper, um, the paper of my student, Heng Tsang, that was part of a um, human robot interaction conference uh, and presented in a workshop. Okay, so this was the first uh, study. So we saw it earlier that humor style significantly affect people's rating on robot telling jokes. So we wanted to explore more and see how the humor style 
um, affect people's perception on some specific humorous contents. Okay, so what kind of jokes would you like? Okay, so this is one of the questions that the robot should uh, ask itself. Okay, so this is the second experiment that we run. So firstly, we selected like 20 jokes from a joke data set and websites. And um, so five jokes per um, style, humorous style. Um, and we asked participants to rate these jokes online. So we had 77 participants that took part in our experiment and each participant rated our 20 jokes uh, based on the uh, various humor styles, so affiliative, self-enhancing, self-defeating, and aggressive. And we calculate these are the average ratings for each type. Uh, in order to keep so the funniest and best of each type of joke, so we removed one joke from each type with the lower score. So finally, all type of jokes have very near average ratings. So you can see it here on the right. Okay, so that's our first um, uh, our first experimentation, just to be sure that our uh, jokes uh, are appropriate. Um, so here's our uh, system design. So for this second experiment, so we use the pepper robot. Um, we also use thermal and RGB cameras to detect participant uh, facial uh, features. And all images that were processed in, in ROS and we obtained so the facial temperature and um, action unit data in real time. So here it's a video to show you how the, the, the camera is uh, work when the robot tells a joke. Okay, so for this experiment, second experiment, so we had 12 uh, students uh, from IP Paris that um, participated. Um, so they watched so the robot's performance one by one in a quiet room uh, and the paper told so the jokes um, uh, one, uh, one by one. Also, there were uh, 10 second uh, intervals between each joke. And as previously mentioned, so we recorded also so the RGB and so the thermal images uh, in order to get so all the facial expressions and uh, temperature. And uh, also, so they had to fill, so the participants had to fill two questionnaires, uh, one which uh, was um, the humor style questionnaire to measure the humor style uh, and also uh, the jokes uh, rating questionnaire. So here are some uh, some of our uh, results after analyzing so the ratings for the from the participants. Uh, so uh, we analyzed all four kinds uh, of humor style scores, um, and um, for all kind of uh, humor style scores of the participants with their ratings. So we found that uh, with the increase of self defeating scores people's ratings on all uh, four types of jokes increased. So in the four graphs here on the right, um, the horiz horizontal um, axis um, indicates so the self-defeating score and on the uh, vertical axis indicates so the ratings. So in order to also verify if these two factors are significantly correlated, so we used so the Pearson correlation coefficients, and so the re results validated these in terms of statistical significance. As I previously said, so we used both so the RGB and thermal cameras uh, and images. So we also analyzed so the facial features uh, detected by uh, these cameras. So we use the occurrences of action unit 12 uh, to indicate the degree of uh, happiness. We found a positive correlation uh, between an individual humor style 
uh, scores and the degree of happiness induced by the jokes. So then we analyze also the temperature in the regions of the forehead uh, and the right and left cheeks, the nose, lower lip and chin. Uh, so we found also that people uh, who have uh, high um, self-enhancing uh, scores will have um, higher lip temperature variation slope when watching aggressive types uh, of jokes than those who have a lower scores for self-enhancing humor styles. So more details about all this uh, experiment can be found in our paper presented at Roman uh, this uh, summer. Okay, so last part that I'm uh, presenting very quickly because this is a work that was just accepted uh, at ICSR. It's about robot gesture generation for helping producing humorous content. So our proposed framework uh, is mainly composed of four parts, including an encoder, decoder, a big gesture generation model. So these four parts uh, work together to generate so the cost speech gesture uh, in order to clearly express semantics. So we designed and conducted uh, several experiments. So we used both the baseline method and so the proposed method to generate different gestures uh, according to different uh, paragraphs. Uh, so we have here an example. Sorry, my friends, I don't know how to get to the place you said, but I think you can take and give more information. Uh, so we use also to the pepper uh, humanoid robot to perform so these gestures. Okay, so uh, for this, uh, we had like 50 students uh, from uh, 50 participants from our university and the University of Manchester. They took part in the online survey. Uh, the participants needed to rate uh, the degree of human likeness, naturalness, and easiness to understand so the, the speech. And uh, we wanted to see to what extent are the gestures of the robots similar to those of um, a human. Uh, how natural are the robots' um, gestures? And to what extent do um, robots' uh, gesture makes so the speech easier to understand? So we applied Kurskow Wallace, um, and so the results confirm that uh, there are significant differences between participants' ratings. Um, on the gesture generated uh, by the proposed method and the gesture generated by the baseline method in terms of all these three factors. So of course, this is just a quick preview. If you want to know more, please just like read our paper that will appear at ICSR and my PhD student, so Hang Tsang will also be very happy uh, to hear any feedback and any questions you may have. Okay, so just to conclude, uh, I've shown you two main studies, one around human modeling and understanding in the assistive context for the elderly, and a second study um, that was built around how to adapt and generate robot behaviors uh, in uh, a context in which humor is used to facilitate social communication and interaction. And that can be used later also in an assistive uh, context. So there are still a lot of challenges um, around how can we build long-term interactions in the wild uh, by taking into consideration inter and intra individual differences and variability, and by providing personalized and adaptive robot uh, behaviors in order to improve the quality of life of vulnerable population. So there is still a lot of work to do and many challenges. Okay, so I would like to thank my current PhD students and all the collaborators uh, for all the excellent work. Um, I'm also, uh, before ending, I will also have uh, to make uh, 
um, an announcement. We have an open position. Uh, so recently we had um, a successful uh, MSTA, so Marie Curie project called RICOM that was accepted. The robotics and artificial intelligence for critical asset monitoring. Um, this is a great project with great partners. So you can see more at so these uh, links. So please apply if you're interested. Uh, so this is the topic and the thesis uh, topic um, that it's linked to my work, which is on performance, trust, workload, and social processes in a human robot collaborative task. So thank you a lot for your attention. Sorry that I will not uh, be present at the questions uh, session because I'm currently teaching. Uh, do not hesitate to contact me for any questions you have here on the screen uh, in the lower right part, um, my email address. And thank you again and hope to see you all uh, next time in a face-to-face -face, uh, meeting. Thank you. Bye-bye.